Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the crude oil contract, WTI, uh, West Texas Intermediate Crude. That's the U.S. Uh, grade. Uh, and then there's North Sea Brent. They're both uh, in terrible shape. Here's the Brent contract, uh, even more ominous. You can see here that Brent has actually made a low below the chart as far as we have on the monthly chart, below 1994. Uh, this is ominous. Um, so here's the WTI. You can see it's below where we were at the bottom of the last recession. And if we go to the daily here, you can see it's pretty much a dead cat bounce. Uh, pulling the hourly, you can see that we had that low below 28 and then a rally up to 35 in about a week and we're, we've already lost 50% of the rally that we had and we're in my opinion we're going to lose more than all of it and it would not surprise me at all to see a $12 price print for crude. That was uh, one of the lows that we had way back in the day and that was kind of a, a budget buster, a, a big, a lot of companies went bankrupt with that. Now, a lot more are going to go bankrupt with this. If you follow Zero Hedge, there's been an article that Zero Hedge did recently calling out the Federal Reserve. And basically what they accused the Federal Reserve of doing, this was the Dallas Fed, was meeting with, secretly meeting with some of the banks that hold these um, fracking and oil-based debts and basically telling them whatever you do we do not want you to mark to market these debts and we're gonna look at a chart that's very very important about the bonds and how that actually predicts where things are going but before we do that I want to jump over to the uh, debt to the penny which we cover often and then we're going to finish up with these fake elections that uh, we had the news coming out tonight so let's go over to debt to the penny this is of course the treasury direct site and we had a big jump up today you can see what i always do i take the date one year ago and you can see one year ago we were at 18.099 so 18.1 trillion in total public debt outstanding. You can see today, uh, well, actually the 29th of January, we had 19.012 trillion. So we've got a good $900 billion deficit, running, rolling deficit. And that's the only one you can count because the reported figures are always fake. So we can see from this that they're adding still nearly one trillion dollars a year onto the national debt nothing ever changes and i'm going to show you with the elections nothing ever changes with those uh, so let's go over to this drudge report here this is the news that came out tonight and uh Actually, I wanted to show you a chart from Zero Hedge before we do that. This is a chart I was talking about that is the junk bonds. Now, if you remember the story that uh, I talked about where Zero Hedge came out and accused the Dallas Fed of having secret meetings, and this is subject to FO. Uh, Freedom of Information Act inquiries, and there's a big drama about it, but really, I, I don't believe the Federal Reserve is even subject to Freedom of Information Act inquiries, and, and that whole thing really is just a fraud. But uh, this chart really lays it out here because this chart is of two things, the S&P 500 index and U.S. high-yield junk bond spreads. So you can see in the circled areas that we had at the top of the dot-com bubble, you can see that the 
the junk bond spreads actually mark the top more accurately than the stock market did because we know the NASDAQ crashed. Again, this is the S&P 500. So the NASDAQ crashed before the S&P 500. But you can see that the junk bond yields uh, or the price of the junk bonds crashed, which indicates much higher yields. That started back in early 98. And you can see there was a huge spike down and then a rally. And then uh, it finished off with a recession. And uh, you can see that on the second leg down on junk bond yields, then the stock market followed and then it made a bottom. And we had 911, we had the election of George Bush Jr. And then we had a huge rally. You can see that the junk bonds uh, front run the stock market by a lot. And then they topped um, back in late 2007. And then they had a tremendous crash in the junk bonds, which meant the yield went through the roof Eventually, the stock market followed. Now you can see where we are at. Uh, we are now topping, indefinitely a topping formation in the S&P 500. But you can see that quite a ways back, even before uh, 2015, the junk bond yields started to uh, go way up. We had junk bonds yielding 4.5%. And if you think about that, it's utterly absurd. We know that, for example, Chicago under uh, Rombo, Deadfish, Rahm Emanuel, uh, we have billion dollar deficits going in to public school system budgets and all kinds of budgets that are just being blown out there. But they're still offering a yield of 8% on those bonds um, and that's rising. So we can see that the junk bond yields really took off before uh, the stock market had even topped. You can see that big di uh, divergence here. Um, in 2013, that stock market was rallying strongly, whereas the junk bonds had already rolled over and had gone down. Now you can see the divergence, and it's a massive divergence. It, the only comparison is right here. It, just at the very end of the dot-com bubble when finally the junk bonds cracked hard and stocks went down with it but then rallied and then everything rolled over. So that's an indication of where we're at. Will both of these continue down? I can't say for sure. It's possible that we could actually get a bounce in the junk bonds, a bounce into new highs on the stocks, and then both of them turn down and have a tremendous crash. That's quite possible, but it's very clear here that we're in the third wave of this cycle where the junk bonds are beginning to crash. And now we know with this uh, anecdotal information from Zero Hedge that the Fed is telling these oil, gas, shale, uh, the banks that loan to those companies to not mark them to market because probably anybody who loaned any money to a shale company is 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 not going to get paid back. They're going to go bust. And uh, we saw from the oil price that it's not coming back anytime soon. In fact, it's probably going lower and even much lower. Uh, my opinion is that oil can actually lose another 60 or 70 percent from here down to that $12 price. So that's absolutely shocking. Again, as I pointed out before, uh, and Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett pointed out that uh, we don't find out who is swimming naked until the tide goes out. And trust me, there are a lot of banks that are swimming naked that funded these shale and uh, U.S. oil um, loans. So let's get to the main story, and that's going to be these fake and rigged elections. Now, we have this headline here on Drudge. Uh, that uh, Cruz won the Iowa caucuses and that Trump came in second and Rubio came in third. Uh, that was close to what I was expecting, but you have to remember that these elections are fake. They're rigged and they're fake. Uh, none of these candidates are real candidates. And I'm going to show you here that <laughs> there's some question as to who these people really are or what they really are. Uh, they're very suspicious characters that they put up in front of us. 
Um, it doesn't really matter what they put up in front of us because we know that the voting machines are controlled by certain companies which are controlled by certain agencies and uh, that whole thing is fake as well. I've talked about it in other videos how the uh, voting machines, if they intended to do accurate voting machines, they could do it very easily. They could actually have voting machines. We have the technology now more than we've ever had in the past. If you remember, we've had voting observers in, in countries that are considered to be suspicious. So we have these African countries or South American countries where these world agencies like the UN and others send in witnesses to verify that they're honest votes. Well, they don't do that in the U.S., should probably do it here more than anywhere else. But uh, we have these voting machines now, and it's already been proven that these voting machines can pretty much uh, put the vote wherever the, the, the programmers want the vote to be. Uh, that doesn't have to be the case. The technology exists to print out a paper ticket with an encrypted key and have a public ledger and a private ledger and have the people who voted get their own key that no one knows and to go back and re-verify online. There's a, a technological way to have honest elections. But of course, none of these people are interested in having honest elections because the elections we have are fake. And uh, so that's why you don't have a paper printed ticket with a verifiable encrypted key that can be publicly authenticated on a website and uh, tested and verified publicly because none of these people are interested in honest elections. Now, not only are they not interested in honest elections, they're not even interested in honest candidates. Now, I know it's going to be a big stretch for a lot of you. I've talked about a lot of things that a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, find hard to accept. And the only reason why I'm talking about these things is because these are things that the Lord has shown me. He's opened my eyes and I can actually see these things. I, I'm not uh, looking down on anyone who can't see these things. Not everyone can see these things. But these things are things that are being revealed in the last days. And not only are these elections fake, but the candidates themselves, they're actually fake. So let's look at these candidates here. Let's start off with the Cruises. This is the Cruz family. This is Ted. And this is his wife. Now you can draw your own conclusions. I think that if the veil has been lifted from your eyes and you can see with your own eyes who or what these people are, you can probably see that they are not what they claim to be. This is Marco Rubio and his wife, quote unquote. And you can see here again, these people aren't what they claim to be. And then again, we've got the most important one, at least we were told, beforehand. We've got Donald Trump and his, I'll put that in quotation marks, his wife. So if you've got eyes to see, I think you'll be able to see what I'm saying. If you don't have eyes to see, that's okay. But uh, we not only have fake elections, we also have fake candidates. And if you think that anything is going to change based on the elections, you've already bought into the lie. And we'll talk to you next time.